We must answer for our life. And the reason we must answer it is because one day we're going to stand before God and we're going to be forced to answer for how we have lived. If we have received his forgiveness, then we will be filled with joy um, at that moment. We stand before him in anticipation of that moment because we know it is well with our soul. We're clean. We're good before God. And we look forward to that day standing before him and God says, enter into heaven and spend an eternity with me and my angels, with Jesus for forever. But on the other hand, if we've said to God, God, I want to stay the course. I want to stay the course and do it my way. God will then separate us from himself and we will be cast into hell or what is called the lake of fire for forever, being separated from God as a place of his judgment upon us for forever and ever and ever. So this is important to understand what God has to say about accountability and reversing course because there is a lot at stake. It's not just about feeling good, feeling happy and getting all this forgiveness done so I can, you know, so I can just be happy inside. It, there's more at stake in that. It's about our eternal soul of life and death beyond this life into the next. Now, God does not want anyone to be separated from him for eternity. He doesn't want to cast us uh, to be a part of him in the lake of fire. He wants everyone to be forgiven if they meet his condition of repentance, of reversing their course. So let me ask this next question, lead to the next key. How's forgiveness possible? How is it possible? Jesus. Jesus is our hope for forgiveness. The Bible says that he is the way. He says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Said another way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can receive forgiveness except through me. Jesus is the way to forgiveness. There is no other way to forgiveness. Mentioned earlier, you know, other types of rituals and prayers and, and, and addictions and pleasure and all that. There is no other way to true forgiveness, lasting forgiveness, real forgiveness, other than through Christ, for he is the son of God. And then Jesus, he died, then rose again. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He appeared to Peter and then to the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500. It says here, Christ died for our sins. What we talked about earlier was the reason that we need forgiveness is because of sin. And here it says that Christ died for our sins. He died for them. I'm the one who committed those sins. I'm, I, I lied. I was impure. I stole. I'm the one who did stupid stuff, not Jesus. I should have died. But it says here, Christ died as what is called my substitute on my behalf. He took my place. And then as evidence he died, he was buried. But then here's the hope and the reason that we can have forgiveness is he was raised on the third day. He overcame sin. He overcame death. And because he lives, I can too. And one day he's going to be coming back for you and for me. The next, he loves us. The Bible says, for God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why did Christ die for our sins? Why does God, the creator, provide us forgiveness because he loves us. He knows that we've committed sin. He knows we're racked with guilt. He knows we want it gone. And he's provided a way because of love. He loves you. And the evidence of that love is he offers you forgiveness. And he made forgiveness possible through Christ. The Bible says everyone who believes in him, Jesus, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Forgiveness can be possible. He paid the penalty for our sins. And forgiveness is also a financial term. It's used in banking and other financial industries because it refers to a debt that might be forgiven, a financial debt. A, a friend of mine, a lady friend of mine, many years ago had experienced a terrible tragedy in her family and her dad passed away. And the, she had a number of student loans. And the, uh, the company that held these student loans found out about her story. 
and did an unprecedented thing in an act of compassion and forgave her student loan debt. I don't know how big it was, but the bank forgave it. They forgave it, got rid. She didn't have to pay that student loan back. God has done something greater through Christ. He's provided a way for a huge debt of sins that we've committed to be forgiven. We don't have to pay it back. All we need to do is just a few things that I'll get to in just a moment. And that leads us to the next key. What do we need to do to experience this forgiveness? Is simply this, is we need to receive God's forgiveness through belief and through calling upon his name. None of us are worthy of receiving God's forgiveness. We can't do enough good things to warrant God, to say to him, God, I should receive your, your, your forgiveness because I think I'm worthy of it. It's a gift, it's a gift. And because it's a gift, nobody's worthy to receive a gift and also nobody can demand a gift either. A gift is given out of the compassion of the giver and it's given not because of anything that the receiver has done, just because the giver, the author of that gift, feels a sense of love, compassion and kindness and mercy. First of all, we must believe. The scripture says, truly I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. To believe is to agree with the truth of who Christ is, that he did die, he was buried, he did rise again from the dead. He's alive and to believe that one day he's coming back. And then we must call upon God for the scripture says, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved or put another way, for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be forgiven. Your sins, that debt taken away, and your sins washed away, washed, cleansed, that guilt gone. So much better than a dip in the Gansey River. So much better than what a simple prayer could do by calling upon God. I encourage you today, in your own words, in your own way, in a spirit of humility, and with a sense of desperation, I encourage you to call upon God that you might experience his forgiveness. That, that sense of shame, that sense of guilt, that weight of sin might be gone. And for the first time, you can experience freedom in what really living is. Thanks for watching. And may Jesus be your hope for today. Thanks for tuning into the broadcast today. Clint wants to help you in your spiritual journey, so he's offering you a gift. If you contact him today, he'll send you a Bible and Bible study at no cost. You can reach Clint through our website, toll-free number, or by writing him. We look forward to hearing from you. This has been a production of the Ministry of Great Awakenings. On behalf of our team and the supporters who make this program possible, I'm Rod Keene. Now may God richly bless you, and please tune in again next time for another episode of Hope for Today with Clint Decker.